Hello, this is Incarnation Realty Group. We are evolving every single moment with new experiences. Let's learn together. In this video, we will share step-by-step -step filing underused housing tax by Federal Government of Canada. It is totally different from a vacancy tax by each provincial government. It can be a daunting task, but we can do it. It's a simple process. Real estate investors, not accountants, but excited to share experience with joining me is my investor friend, Liz. Navigating through the underused housing tax filing process more easy. Let's get started. Yeah. So you're really big deal about underused housing tax. Try to fill out by yourself, right? Yeah, I did the forms for my two places, three places, and um, then my husband shares a cottage with his family. Mm -hmm. And I started doing the form for that as well, but then I realized you didn't need to because it's a three season property. So there's all these exceptions on the form. Mm -hmm. It's it's like three pages. It's really easy. Yeah, three pages. Would you mind to share that? Nobody reliable for this, just sharing what we are doing, right? Let me uh, see if I can I'll go to the, the site and download a copy. What is it? Underused housing Good. tax, right? Exactly, Federal. Underused housing tax Canada. Look at it. It's right there. And then also extended until November 1st. Yeah, yeah. Let me scroll down on this page. Who? But a lot of people are unaware of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got it. And I'm going to share the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Yep. This part's just bump. You can read that, whatever. And this is typical name, address, contact information. Do you own the property as part of a partnership? So my husband and I own it together. And mm -hmm. according to this, yeah, it's not a capital P. This is where it got dicey. I put no, it's not part of a partnership because I don't have a partnership number and it's not part of a trust. So we moved on. Uh, physical address. What type of property is it? Did the duplex. I have two duplexes. Toronto a duplex is different from here. So it could be a semi-detached house or it could be a duplex, whatever. All right. Uh, in what year did you become the owner of the property? And what type of ownership do you have? So there's sole, joint tenancy, and tenancy in common. So one of them means if you die, then the estate goes to the surviving person. And the other one means if you die, my portion stays with my estate. So my beneficiaries would inherit it. And if you're joint, then you have to say how many owners and what percentage you mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we go. What is the assessed value of the property? So this to me is your property assessment that you got. Yeah. That's what you put in there. Mm -hmm. What's the property's most recent sale price? Mm -hmm. Well, what did you buy it for? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And they're going to take whichever one is greater. Like I was looking at properties uh, in Ontario, mm -hmm. in Sobel, mm -hmm. and they're selling for, you know, five to 600,000. But the tax assessed value is 250,000. So it's just kind of crazy. Tax assessed value is 330, but it's almost 500. Right. So the 500 would go in the exactly. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They want whatever you're going to pay more on. All right. Multiple residential properties. This mm -hmm. is where it gets interesting. Owners who are neither Canadian citizens nor permanent residents of Canada, but you are a Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. And I am a resident of Canada. Mm -hmm. And if you're a corporation, this part doesn't apply to you. Corporation not doing section one, two, three. Yeah, I don't need to do one, two, or three in this either. Exactly. And then you get to hear tax wise, they're always asking you your name of your spouse or whatever social number. So if we're not talking about multiples now, we're talking about other residential property. Are you an owner of another residential property? Yes. Does your spouse consented to this election? Well, kind of have to, yes. And they'll sign. Now, here we go with exemption. Where was 310? Here. If 300 is yes, so if we do have properties in Canada, how many other residential properties do you own? And do you have a spouse or common law who's neither a Canadian citizen nor a permanent resident who is an owner of residential properties of Canada, right? So call them CRA instead of my name, page one, part one, yeah. legal name of the owner is going to be corporation name, right? Yeah. All goes by section two and three, even section one. They yeah. said answer as of corporation. Yeah. So 
Use this return if you are an owner of a resident property and not an excluded. Okay, so what we have to do is look for an excluded owner. So scroll down, there's a section down here. That, there is a section here that describes what an excluded owner is, this one here. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Legal name is corporation and the social insurance SIN number put them as a business number. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got room for the business number there. Yeah. From there, so everything to do this corporation, nothing to the personal, totally separate. This yeah. is only one entity. I put them corporation and the social number as a business RU number. Second page is 230, physical address ID number. Property tax assessment roll number. Yeah. Page three, it's not applicable. If you're a corporation, this part does not apply to you. Right? Yeah. So part three, corporation doesn't apply. We don't have to write in any there, right? Right. Correct. Okay. Part four. So part four is talking about you don't need to do this for your primary residence. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, we're not talking about your primary residence, so we're fine. Yeah, part five. Okay, this part applies in situations where your ownership has one or more qualifying occupancy periods totaling. Okay, right. This is the part where if you've had somebody in your properties for at least 180 days in the calendar year, mm. you're not going to have to pay the tax. Right. right? Mm. Um, so when calculating the total days do not include periods of continuous occupancy that are less than a month so this is going to make it difficult for short-term rentals if they've got you know three weeks and then three weeks and then three weeks and it doesn't add up to a certain amount continuous occupancy are then oh my okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we're fine with that mm -hmm. any common days of overlapping qualifying occupancy periods only count once okay fine mm -hmm. see the additional information at the end 505 exemption yes right Yes, yes. Okay. It says here, if you filled in no, you have to go to part six. If yes, you just go straight down to part nine. So what you're saying is your property did have occupancy for, for more than 180 days. So if it's yes, then you go straight down to part nine. So you don't have to fill out any of this, mm -hmm. any of this. You go all the way down to part nine. Not the part six. No six, no seven, no eight. Okay, part nine. Okay, that's it. That's it. Fair market value or those things, part, part seven. No, because it said go straight down to nine. The only one, the, the reason they want the fair market value now is because if you did have less than that number of days, mm. they calculate the tax as a percentage of the fair market value. Okay, then we don't have to pay anything. That's why I decided to make sure I filled it in for my properties because it's so easy because it's pretty clear. Let's talk about another example. Purchase it property during 2022. Let's do it. We just section yeah. nine, November and December, only two months ownership. That's fine. They cover that in here when they talk about exemption. Let me just scroll. Sorry, I don't remember where the exemption page is. Other exemptions. If you've only had it two months, mm -hmm. for the new one, you'd have to say no. But then you'd come down here and find all of these are other exemptions. 650 is possible. The construction of the residential property is not substantially completed before April of the calendar year. So you could use this one as well. 670. 670, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fill these make it exempt. Let me see if it comes along the next bit. If you choose to make election for this particular, you're choosing that instead of the tax of value. All right, what do we say about the exempt? If your ownership of the residential property is ex okay. Here it is again. Mm -hmm. Is your ownership of the residential property exempt under any of the following? Then we put yes here. If yes, then go straight to part nine. So we still don't need to do seven and eight. Part five, 505, we put them no in it, right? Yeah, put no for that one. Put no for the new condo. Less than 180 days. Go to the part six, six, six of five, and yes. And then yeah. go down to the 670 and check mark. Yeah. Yep. And then straight to the part nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Part nine. Name of the individual, the representative or authorized persons. Exactly. And what your position in the corporation. 
Absolutely, yes, and the date. Yeah, so print name, what your position is, do your signature and the date. For the accountant, pay for $800. Can you imagine? I think it's because it's new and they don't really, you know, understand. Or maybe they're just going to have a lot of them to do. But, you know, at least you filled in the form and you filed it. So now there's no penalty. I used to file my own tax all the time. I agree with you. I think you still need to be able to read the forms so that I understand what was done on my behalf. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Not only the saving money for accountants, but also understanding what's going on there. You know, sourcing out. We understand what is about. Can you put them YouTube this conversation? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> Everyone can be pro investors. Thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next video.